Josefa was a young 23-year-old millionaire living in the city of Cartagena in the country of Colombia. She lived her life spending time in discotheques, drinking and sleeping with any man she wanted. Until one day, in one of those many outings to drink, she met a guy with whom she fell in love. His name was Raul. He got her pregnant and abandoned her. She had no family, only her parents, but life taught her this lesson. This is the story of Josefa, a young lady who always had everything at her young age. From a very young age, she never had any needs since her parents were wealthy cattle ranchers who only lived by traveling. At school, she always treated her classmates badly, telling them, you are starving. The people at this school only hung out with her because they knew she had money. Her father's name was Don Marcial, and her mother was Doña Irene, two contemptuous people who always thought that money was everything in life, and just like their daughter, they humiliated people. Whenever Josefa went out in her modern automobile, she liked to insult the people who approached her every time the traffic light turned red and said, Lady, for charity, give me a little coin to eat. When Josefa saw them, all she would say was, Go away, go away, you filthy people. Don't you see that I could run you over? And she would continue on her way at full speed. The following year, she joined her father's company, Don Marcial. If someone didn't like her, she would treat them badly, saying, Hey, don't you realize that I am the daughter of one of the richest men in Colombia and owner of this company? So listen to me. People just bowed their heads and did what Josepha said, until one day she decided to go out and celebrate. She had completed her first month in the company, and she went to a discotheque where she would meet two handsome young foreigners who would be her friends, and they would drink until they passed out. When Josepha woke up, she realized that she was in a hotel next to a young black man. She was very scared and said, what happened? What am I doing here? The young foreigner just said, Hey friend, you wanted to come here. I better go. The young woman, very shocked and at the same time without thinking, said, There's always a first time with a colored man. Monday would come and she would go back to work. The mistreatment continued to be done more and more often with people at her work, and especially with the cleaning staff who before entering would knock on the door saying, Miss, may I come in? Josepha would reply, Hurry up, finish cleaning and get out. Weeks went by and all the cleaning staff had resigned, and it was because of Josepha's treatment with them. But only one kind-hearted lady named Maria, who never said anything to Josepha, stayed on. And every time Josepha yelled at her, she just kept quiet. Until one day, she saw Josepha very sad and said to her, Miss Josepha, you look very sad. Are you feeling well? And Josepha, without thinking and with a lost look, said, I don't have my period and I don't know what to do. I am two months late. Maria replied, Miss, how can I help you? Josepha reacted and told her to get out of the office, that a maid like her could not help her in, in any way, and also said, Who are you if a word escapes you, maid? At that moment, Josepha said to herself in her mind, I have to throw this woman out of here. Arriving home at night, Josepha had thought of a plan to throw the poor woman out and even send her to a prison. So the next day, she arrived at the company with an expensive piece of jewelry. While Maria was cleaning, she went to the cleaning locker room and threw it into her things. When Maria finished cleaning, Josepha shouted loudly, saying, Where is my jewelry, Maria? Maria was very scared and kept quiet, and only said that she did not have anything. Immediately, the police arrived, who looked inside Maria's things and saw the expensive jewelry. Maria said to Josepha, Please tell the truth, but the police would take her away, and she would be taken to a prison. The days went by, and Josepha was pregnant not knowing what to do. She could do nothing but have them. As time passed, and Josepha did not what to do, she resigned. Until one day at night, her father would come home and tell her, I thought you were a good daughter. All this time you worked in the company, you took money from me. Now I'm broke. Don Marcel would be shocked and suffer a heart attack, leaving for the afterlife immediately. The funeral would be very sad, since they had no family. Mrs. Irene, seeing what happened, could not believe that the company that her husband had built with hard work was bankrupt. And little by little, she would lose her sense of reality. So after a few months, she would be admitted to a hospital for people with mental health problems. Josepha would be left alone and pregnant until it was time to give birth. She would go alone to the best clinic and she would have two beautiful babies of a beautiful color that when she saw them, she didn't want to see them. And the doctors of the hospital said, 
It seems that you don't want these babies, that they are twins, they are a blessing. But I will tell you something, you are not well. When you gave birth, you suffered a fainting spell. I recommend you to have some tests. Josepha would go home with her children and the next day she would listen to the doctor and went to do the corresponding tests on her head. After two hours, a doctor told her, Excuse me for telling you this, you have three months to live. We found something and we cannot operate. I am sorry. At that moment, Josepha remembered all the bad things she did and said, God forgive me, forgive me for everything I did. Josepha would walk around crying and crying and she said, what am I doing having so much money if it is of no use to me? She got into her car and drove away shedding tear after tear until she ran out of tears. Josepha, seeing how she felt, took refuge in God. She went to the cemetery to ask her father's forgiveness and to the mental hospital to see her mother who no longer recognized her. Time went by and a month had already passed and she was very resigned and had a plan. Josepha would dress as a beggar and leave with her children in her car very early in the morning. She would take off their clothes and leave them sleeping on a large piece of cloth while she saw that there were no people she would get in her car. She saw that a little girl would come up to the babies, pick them up, wrap them up warm, and take them home. Josepha would start following her in her car, waiting a couple of hours and pretending to be a beggar. She would knock on the door of her house and say, Do you have any food? Help me, I don't have enough to eat. The girl made her come in and would give her a plate of hot soup, while Josepha, very sad, cried, saying in her mind, What a good girl! Without knowing me, she helped me. Josepha wiped her tears and said, I will tell you the truth. I am the mother of these twins. I just wanted to find the right person to be with my children. I only have a short time left to live. Wouldn't you like to live with your mother in my house? The girl told her that her mother worked in a large company and that she was unjustly accused of something she had not committed. Josepha was shocked and only said, Her name is Maria. At that moment, Josepha left in her car and talked to her lawyer to help Maria. Maria went free, seeing that there was no evidence against her and would be taken to her humble home by Josepha. It's okay, Maria told her. I don't think you recognize me. I'm Josepha. I apologize for hurting you so much, but I have little time left to live and I want you and your daughter to take care of my children. They are twins. I know you have a good heart. I will leave you my house and a lot of money. Maria only told her, I forgive you, ma'am, but the money doesn't matter. Josepha told her to take it so they could all live well as a family, and she knew she was leaving her children in good hands because of the values and love that Maria and her daughter had. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider sharing it with someone who may find it interesting. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one.